Okay, um, I get to be here with my godfather, Riley Taylor. Um, and so we have a fun announcement to share that we are writing a book together, right? Yes. <laughs> um, and so I wanted to tell you guys a little bit about why we're writing a book together. I have written two books already, so most of you have seen that um, and been following that journey. Riley actually helped me with that a couple times. I sent you both books, I think, didn't mm -hmm, I? Mm -hmm. I sent you both and you read through them and gave me feedback. Thank yes, you. I was impressed. <laughs> uh, but I like coming over to your house sometimes and hearing your guys' stories. You and Lindsay have kind of become like an extra set of parents and grandparents to our kids over the past few years. We've known each other 11, 11 or 12 years. We came into West Island in like yeah. 2009. We've been going to church together for yeah. over a decade. So, yeah. So we, I kept hearing all these really cool stories from the late 60s and 70s at your guys's house over dinner um and was like these are so kind of mind-blowing to me what happened during that jesus people movement and just um where they used to be and where they're at now um is really cool and so i was like you need to write these down you need to write these stories down um and you had been kind of thinking about that too for a while weren't you i had thought about it yeah but the barrier to entry seemed quite high oh. i had and uh, hanging out with you made me realize that um, in technology mm -hmm. and, and your approach to it made it a lot more doable. Yeah, the self, the whole self-publishing route. Yes. And if I could do it with four kids, then you could definitely do it. In yeah, right. It's right. semi-retired yeah, state. I thought you had so. to get 100,000 <laughs> copies guaranteed to be printed, you know. And it's changed a lot. Yeah, it's great. So... Um, so one of the reasons why, um, well, let's just talk a little bit about what is this book about? Cause I've done two books now that are very different topics. And this one is also going to be a very different topic than the other ones that I've done. So, um, this book is going to be about a collection of testimonies, basically from your friends and yourself, um, and Lindsay of, um, from your time, how you got to this discipleship house in Eugene. Oregon and kind of how that shaped you guys because um, the setting is really the Jesus people movement right of that revival in the 60s and 70s where during the free love Vietnam War drug culture a lot of political unrest was going on um, and at the same time there was this massive movement movement um, of just all these young people coming to Jesus left right and center and so <laughs> Uh, you guys got to see live through that and be part of this little snapshot of it in Eugene. It was happening all up and down the West Coast, if I'm recalling my history correctly. <laughs> and even across the whole United States and Europe, too. Yeah. There was some kind of movement. I don't know how much you would call it the Jesus People Movement. Mm -hmm. But on the West Coast, it was definitely that. Mm -hmm. And so um, these stories that we're, we're collect, we've collected, because we have already interviewed like 21 people. Yes. Yeah. Um, not all of them, uh, not all those stories will end up in the book, but um, at least this book. You might do a second one. <laughs> <laughs> um, so um, these stories, uh, what we wanted to do, like my real heart was to take these stories and uh, make them available to like my generation um, because I feel like there were some really cool, key, important um, principles that we could learn from yeah. a past revival and how that was stewarded and how what that looked like uh, i've grown up in the church so for me i didn't don't have stories like theirs they're really interesting um and for you what was kind of your heart motivation about writing a book like this we you know it kind of evolved at first i i just thought these were great stories i started out that th my thread tying them all together would be the people that I knew, at least in my first circle of friends, mm -hmm. and then people who actually ended up living in this liberation house, this Christian discipleship home. I just thought these were great stories. I thought my story was pretty good. And, pretty and then my other friends were pretty amazing stories too. I thought they're just worth capturing mm -hmm. just for themselves. Yeah. Um, but then in the process of thinking and doing it, I realized these are, there, there's something more going on. This is where I decided, okay, I think, the Lord would have me do this and invest this time. Is this is that? Um, it seemed that in these stories there was what the Bible would call a testimony, as in the Old Testament word testimony, which is a repetition of what God did as a invitation to people who hear those testimonies to believe Him 
to do that again, mm -hmm. that that's a demonstrated part of his resume. Mm -hmm. And we certainly want God to do this stuff again. Not the same, but the essence of it, which was the power of God, the, his amazing accommodation to people in their, in their situations. Things like seeing how even as the darkness grew, and it was, there were some pretty dark times there. Uh, in those times, God's seeking of people and drawing them and willingness to move towards them 10 steps when they took one step of openness to him. Yeah. All that increased as the darkness increased. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that seems relevant for this time, a good reason to yeah. write a book, to encourage us uh, what God can and will do again. Yeah, because it does, as I've been hearing these, everyone's stories um, and listening to these interviews, it, like it feels very similar, like the time we're living in now. I mean, from your perspective, would you say that that's pretty, like you're seeing a lot of similar, yes. you know, political unrest, you know, controversy, like just culture yeah. choice shifts and changes like it was in the 60s and 70s. Yeah, again? cultural shifts, political, at, at a societal level, very un. un instability and things happening that no one had seen happen before. Mm -hmm. Could it get any worse than this? Mm -hmm. And and then that matched with all the internal struggles of the people, my friends, myself, uh, the internal mm -hmm. disorientation, mm -hmm. lack of understanding of meaning, fear of the future, um, these kind of emptinesses that really seem to draw the Spirit of God to offer Himself or at least opens people up to considering that God is out there and that he might have something for me, an answer to my distress. Yeah, all my biggest, deepest questions. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, so that's really exciting um, stuff. And has it been fun to, like, collect these interviews? And I mean, you knew all these stories ahead of them. I didn't know them. They're new to me. But... No, I barely, I'd forgotten them. This is 50 years ago. <laughs> 50 years ago. So my, I asked one friend, would you be willing to talk to me for an hour or two about your, your story, how you came to Jesus? He said, well, it would have been easier 10 or 20 years ago when my memory was better. <laughs> this, this, is, this is 50, it's about 50 years ago. It's 50 years ago that I was saved, almost to the month now. Mm. Uh, and most of these people are in that range, plus or minus a couple mm -hmm. years. So I forgot what I was Weird. question I was answering but, there. Yeah, no, what's been our process? I'm kind of kind of going into uh, This is his first live video, guys, and I'm not really up on date on these very often, but we're doing our best. Um, the uh, kind of, pro what have we been doing so far for this book? We've collected interviews, and that yes. was really fun for you in some ways, because you didn't remember all of them. Yeah, these details. are, these are my, my friends, yeah. dear friends, and just watching. And you live together in this discipleship house in yep. Eugene. Yep. Yeah. Um, and so then um, we collected these interviews over the past couple, three months, three or four months now, right? We've been yeah, we've slowly been collecting interviews. And then we got this, tran you got this really cool software that just basically transcribed the recording of mm -hmm. the interviews into a transcript. And then um, we were feeling like we didn't want to just have a book of transcripted interviews because that's not as fun to read transcripted interviews. <laughs> Um, if you read the way we talk, it's different, right, than mm. the way that you read written words. So um, my job in the past couple of weeks, now that we've collected all the interviews, probably about two weeks now, I think we've been doing, has been to take that transcript and kind of craft like a storyline through it. Like, because sometimes people talk um, from like here and then we circle back around or there's important details we pulled out later in the interview. So trying to cohesively put that together in a nice story that's fun to read that's interesting to read that helps immerse the reader in the moment in the culture and really mm -hmm. get in this person's head as much as we can <laughs> um and then you have come back from come over take my draft with your expertise and knowledge of who these people are because they're your friends and kind of put it all back together the way it's supposed to <laughs> yeah, so. the personal knowledge of my friends mm -hmm. plus the cultural knowledge and the, the way we baby boomers thought and think you know mm -hmm. and, and so that we're trying to make each one of these stories be sound really like that person 
and, and as best we they, can. they would come across yeah. <laughs> as best we can. Yeah, as best we can. Uh, without, them their own story, without them yeah. writing their own story, without them writing their own So really, the book is going to end up as like a whole collection of stories, right? A collection of people's stories of like where kind of that most desperate moment maybe in their life and then how they found Jesus and that was the answer and how they ended up in this house. The house is kind of our theme that we're trying to tie a bunch yeah. of these together as like the epicenter of what happened. It's really cool. Yeah, and, and, and really focusing on the dramatic events when, when God speaks to them and they mm -hmm. speak to God and that give and take that happens as a person is ha mm -hmm. having their mind opened up to the fact that God is out there he is there. He's not silent. He hears me. He sees me. And then, and then you know, on to the, the fact that he gave his son, his mm -hmm. life for me to get rescue me. Yeah. Watching that process for each person being uniquely done in the way that God comes clearly crafting in a really creative way, just sit right for each person, bringing each one of these people up through that process to himself, to a, a commitment to a lifelong walk with Jesus as Savior and Lord. That's that's what you see in these people. Yeah, that's really cool. And I, and I really have loved reading these stories and listening to um, these people share their stories, how interconnected they were of like, <laughs> yeah. so you will show up in so-and-so's story and, um, and, and like back and forth and someone else was part of that, like told so-and-so about their testimony, which then got back to him and like, and all these little seeds that are planted through. And so it's fun to like craft a book that's trying that like plants these seeds of like, this person got saved and had this radical encounter. And then they shared with so and so. Mm. And then we get to hear their story of how that was just one little piece of like right. a much bigger picture. Um, so it's really fun to see this whole like, when in when you were living it in the moment, you may not have seen this whole like, big no, bird's eye no. view of how all these Threads right. were coming and merging together, and so I think it'll be really fun for the reader. To it all comes out in retrospective. You know? <laughs> like we didn't know was it? We didn't know we were in a movement. Yeah. We just put that label on retrospectively now. Yeah. Then we just thought this is just what happens. This is this is just happening. This is just it's, happening. Yeah, it's just weird. Yeah. So, anyways, we're really excited about this book, um, and it's coming. Our we're shooting for February twenty second. Um, and we thought, thought um, kind of the goal there was because there's also a movie coming out, Jesus Revolution, on like, like the 24th of February, which is about the same time period in that same movement, but in California, I think, with Lonnie, about Lonnie Frisbee's life and Greg Glory's. Greg, Lonnie Frisbee, Greg Glory are the main characters. Yeah. And Chuck Smith, the okay. pastor of uh, the, the church that ho yeah. hosted the revival, the first start. Yeah, so there's a lot, it feels like there's a trend right now of the, a lot of interest back in that movement and that time period of what was going on. Do you on. want to tell them about the movie that might kind of make them realize it's it's yeah. not your father's Christian movie? What is it about? <laughs> <laughs> it's high quality. It's really you good. You could say it better than I could, but I don't know. it's high quality production values. Oh, great, it's great from the actors. Kingdom Production Company, which has been turning out really, really good, like, A-list quality films, that, but, they're, but they're from a faith, from definitely a faith. Background. Yeah, they've got Kelsey Grammer playing the role of Chuck Smith, mm -hmm. and they have uh, Jonathan Rumi from Rumi, The Chosen, from it, who Lonnie. plays Jesus in The Chosen. He's yeah. playing Lonnie Frisbee, yeah. uh, who's the the hippie preacher who who, who is is credited with being at the epicenter of this started of this mm -hmm. revival. Yeah, so it should be good. I'm excited. I told them before we even were doing the book, I was like, "Hey, this movie's coming out," and like, "You guys, I have to go watch it with you guys because you guys live through this." So. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be fun to watch. But yeah, so our book is coming out the 22nd of February. Yep. Um, so that's really soon. That's like in less than two months. Yes, and really busy. <laughs> so <laughs> pray for us as we keep finishing up these testimonies and drafting them and getting feedback from the people that we interviewed. And um, also, if you want email updates on when it's going to be launched or to help us out with like book covers and titles and giving us feedback on that or helping to spread the word about it, um, there's a link in the description um, here on Facebook and if you're watching this on YouTube later um, in the description there'll be a link um, uh, and just click on that and it'll take you to a little page that tells you what the book's about and how to put in your email for updates so that's all we came on to say cheers is there anything else you wanted to say about why we're doing this book or what the book's about or anything they need to know well it would be really great if people appreciated Jesus even more when they get done reading this book mm. and I, I, that's our prayer yeah, yeah. Because he does some pretty cool things. 
That's, there are some really fun stories, you guys. <laughs> oh my goodness, some really cool stuff. All right, Joseph Nikomoto says, waiting, Grace, for the project. Thank you, Joseph. We appreciate it. Thanks, Joseph. <laughs> All right, bye, everyone. See ya.